Hello, I'm Vincent. And I'm Andrew. And we work at Sunder Fair and Cheshire Stamp Auctions. And um, we've decided to do something a little different today. We've had various questions posed by viewers uh, and quite a lot of questions asking us to talk about stamp catalogues. And uh, it's a huge subject and we, we can only uh, brush the surface of it. But we, uh, we collected armfuls of catalogues. We do. This is just a small portion of our vast library upstairs. Everybody's familiar with the Stanley Gibbons issues, but as for most countries, catalogues are produced for the collectors of those nations. And, and there are a few uh, publishers that uh, publish series of catalogues that cover the whole world. And other publishers do specific countries very well. Um, and I'd say for the whole world, we generally have got Stanley Gibbons uh, based uh, in, in England. We've got Scott, US publisher. Uh, we've got a Mikkel or Michel, who are uh, a German. They cover do listings for the whole world. Yeah. Uh, I think Iver, Iver, uh, Iver and Tellier, them, the yeah. the French publishers, yeah. um, and then we start to. Uh, specialised, don't we, with, mm. with people like uh, Facet here who do the uh, Scandinavian area. And Sassone who do Italy. I think we've got Edifil on We have. Right? Yeah. Edifil do the, the Spanish regions and colonies and so yeah. on there. Very good for civil war issues also if you're a yeah, specialist. Yeah, that sort of thing. It's, it's, um, uh, it, it's a, well, I would say this, um, we've got a huge reference library, mm. but of, of stamp catalogues, this represents maybe 10% of our library, and our library probably mm. only contains a third of the available catalogue. It really is huge. Uh, but collectors, there are, there are two reasons to have uh, a, a stamp catalogue. Um, a lot of people think it's about pricing, but really many collectors use these catalogues to structure their collections and um, by and large the they all use the same technique uh, by listing uh, sets and issues together and put two or three columns of prices yeah um, Stanley Gibbons is a bit different to the others in the way that they blend in the officials and the post is Jews and that sort That's of thing right, into the yeah. main list. If you look at the Scott catalogues from the USA, they tend to separate out the air issues, the express and you know, registration stamp. They all the get official, listed. The official air. Yeah, yeah, they all um, get listed at the back of the catalogue, whereas Stanley Gibbons have everything grouped together. Yeah. You quite often have with Scott, um, uh, half the issues can be at the back of mm. the book, you know, because they'll, they, they, they've got all these separate things. And that works quite well, uh, as, as it works quite well the other way with, with Stanley Gibbons. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, let, shall I put one under the camera? You can. I was just going to say, with the Stanley Gibbons, as well as the pricing information, you find so much background information about each issue. It mm. tells you the name of the printer, the designer, the date it was issued, mm. perforations. You know, it's got everything in there. There's so much work goes into these. And, you know, beginning of each country, there's a little bit of historical mm. history there. I think it's the, Venezuela. The, Venezuela is quite fun, isn't it? It said about the explorer on his second visit, he was eaten by the locals. <laughs> that's which, right. which is there's all a, sorts of <laughs> random knowledge you, you, you in these catalogues. You tend catalog. to absorb all these little, and, little and, footnotes. And these catalogues are the sum of generations of careful editing and yeah. r really high-end analysis and, and, and uh, clever collecting. Mm. And, and it's easy to not to notice that, but really uh, the, the work involved is, is quite tremendous. Yeah. Uh, th let me stick our Bible, which Absolutely. is the, the, the probably the catalogue we use most because it's for, it covers Great Britain and yeah. the, the, the British Commonwealth up to 1970 all in one volume. Known as the part one to everybody. It is the part one. That's part it. one of their series of catalogues. This one covers just the British Commonwealth right. up to 1970, of course. There's later volumes in right. these yellow ones for the Queen Elizabeth issues. I'll, I'll stick this under the camera yeah. and we can have a closer look. So I've opened, opened her up uh, at the Falkland Islands page. 
uh, not randomly. I, I, I picked this page because it includes what many people consider to be the, um, uh, the best set of the British Empire, which is the 1933 centenary of the British administration, the Falkland Islands set. And they, they illustrate the set in full colour. They also illustrate a couple of the varieties. Let me just zoom in on those. So you can see there's a variety you can find on the, the penny stamp and this uh, break in the clouds, which is quite obvious if you compare it to a normal one. And, you know, a couple of nice, useful illustrations. And then there's a listing. And as you can see, it gives the date dates of issue, the name of the set, a, a brief description of each stamp with the colours, some interesting additional information about forge postmarks that are known, a huge amount of knowledge just in this tiny little bit of one page of this vast volume, um, and two columns. And this is interesting. This is an area that can really confuse uh, people with catalogues. What do the columns mean? Well, the first column is for unused stamps, stamps that were never used, and the second column are for used stamps. And the, in the case of the Stanley Gibbons and many other catalogues, you need to understand whether that first column is talking about stamps that have been previously hinged or are never hinged. And for that information, you quite often have to refer to the front, the preamble of the catalogue itself, where they explain their rules for listing other catalogues, make it very clear uh, whether, you're t whether the price is for hinged or never hinged mint. Sometimes you'll see three columns, which may include uh, use for the, the stamp on a genuine cover, or there may in fact be two columns, one for hinged and one for never hinged mint, and used three columns. So a great deal of information and which you can also use if you're using a blank stamp album to write up your own collection. So two uses, help in valuing. Um, now, of course, we do get asked a, a lot about the prices and anyone who's uh, an experienced collector will know that catalogue via prices and market prices are very different yes. and um, the unwary get caught by this uh, experienced collectors do not because they are used to paying lower prices than the listed catalogue values um, the reasons for this are many and varied uh, but I'm pretty sure when the first stamp price list was issued the stamp dealer next door ran round grabbed that list and put in his window they were going to sell at half that price mm. uh, so it is a problem for the catalogue publishers yeah. that it's always used as as something to offer discounts against um, and the percentages can range from a fraction of one percent for damaged stamps through to above catalogue value for unusually fine examples of scarce stamps yeah. Um, and it's uh, part of the um, the elasticity in the hobby that you, you, you get to learn about this as you go along. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, exposing yourself to people's price lists and auctions and eBay and all the other sources of information out there will help you navigate your way. But catalogues really are the way to go. Uh, if you're going to try and understand what you're collecting and uh, otherwise you'll just collect stamps and enjoy the pictures but you do need a tool to help you lay, lay out a, a country and issue order. I was just going to say something else about it. Can I have that Mikkel German oh, yeah. there? The, um, the German Mikkel or Michel catalogues are incredibly detailed because it's obviously that from the country of origin. Now, one great thing about these, because... Oh, is that their German specialised? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Fantastic. Because there are so many pitfalls in collecting German material, 
at the back of the catalogue here, there is a listing of all the active experts for each area of Germany. Mm. So if you had a, you know, some of the German states, for example, all the occupation issues, it lists all the BPP accredited experts here with their addresses and details so you can get them authenticated. Again, yeah. lots of scholarly work in that. And, and, and also, again, lot. it's all about reading the additional information yes. that's yes. tucked away at the front of that, which is invaluable. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's it can be a bit feel a bit tiresome because mm. all you want to do is look up that stamp you found. Yeah. But uh, spend a few minutes. It certainly wouldn't take you an hour no. to to read the most useful parts of the um, of at the front and the back of these catalogues. There's lots of terminology and, that, and so forth in there to help you understand your hobby. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we. We tend to use Gibbons more than anything yeah. because the, yeah. the description of the names of the sets are in English for yes. us. And, but we, we will, for instance, use the German catalogues to describe the German material and also will often put in the Stanley Gibbons numbers as well as the German catalogue numbers yes. uh, to, to help. Um, with Scott, very much will will refer to that for American stamps, um, and but we'll also try and throw in Stanley Gibbons numbers as well because we're based in the UK. Uh, so uh, we've got Sassoni with the Italian, very interesting catalogue, um, very uh, very good listings of the like like a lot of Europe during World War Two. And World War One, there were some very unusual historical events that get represented on the stamps, and it, it's very helpful mm. to have a specialist catalogue yes. at your fingertips. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would, uh, I would say, if you're collecting Great Britain or British Empire, obviously you've got to use Stanley Gibbons. Um, Scott is also pretty good, but mm. Gibbons is the best listing for that. Uh, you have. Um, strange differences between the catalogues for instance Scott their set prices will be the sum of the individual stamps whereas Stanley Gibbon suggests a slight discount for a complete set and we can argue all day with a good bottle of wine whether that's the right thing to do but it's it's a choice of the the editing staff and it's historically set in stone so it's a difficult thing for any of the the catalogue uh, producers to change some of the basic formulas because people have used them for years to build their own collections. Um, it, it's they're pretty much all in colour these days, which is nice. Yes, um, I, I was just thinking that myself actually. Yeah. Um, they're all very well produced. Yeah, and I guess really it doesn't matter if you've got you know the current catalogue every year, as long as you've got the basic information, you're not too worried about the prices. As long as you've got that record, you can refer to that, you know, for 10 years maybe. Yeah. And, you know, second-hand editions are always available, mm. I'm sure, online. We, we keep them up to date as much as possible mm. to keep, you know, note of the trends of the market. But, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I would say as professionals, we simply couldn't use online catalogues. No. Um, I think they're appropriate if you're a collector and you're collecting one country, but... We are forever flipping around pages, putting elastic band between pages, tweezers in yeah. another page, yeah. because you're you're dealing with uh, perhaps collections that are laid out differently mm. to the catalogue you're using, um, and uh, in many ways we use these catalogues. Um, uh, we'll we'll flip the pages because we're looking for a design, mm. and that's really quite tricky. You if you use an online catalogue you've really got to know where you're going um so uh, we, we we like paper ones yes. don't we yes. I, th I think uh, but there's no reason why online catalogues wouldn't work for you uh, if, especially if you're in collecting one specific yeah. area and the catalogues can be quite pricey as well i mean mm. you know we spend several thousand pounds a year in updating <laughs> all the catalogues um, but uh, as, as why I say, you know, an old edition doesn't really matter. Mm. I mean, something like the Commonwealth catalogue is... I'm, I'm, I'm wondering whether I should put another catalogue. I'm rather fond of Facet, actually. Okay. Very well-edited catalogue. So this is a page from Facet catalogue. 
And uh, interestingly, this has four columns. As you can see at the top of these, you've got these two stars mean unmounted mint or never hinge mint. This one star means mint but being previously hinged. This circle with a dot in it means used. And this little envelope means this is the price for that stamp on a properly used cover. And I mean, just look at the work here. This is in um, Swedish and in British, or English, I should say, <laughs> not British. Um, so a huge amount of useful information here for a collector. And as Andy said, you don't have to change that every year. But that we'll, I will, we'll probably use that as an end point for this yes. video because we could just go on forever. We have great debates in our stamp room with the team about the appropriate catalogues to use for which country mm. and, and really what catalogues we think our collectors and our clients are using for particular countries and uh, we're, you know we're always surprised uh, but mm. we, we do our best and we have as many of the catalogues as as possible yeah. to, ha to help with our describing and uh, if you've got any specific questions to ask we'll see if we can help I've got a question. Are no. you going to carry all these upstairs? No, no, no. Yeah, look, look, look at you. You're a big strapping fella, and uh, I think you can do it. <laughs> Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you.